their top eight in, in the top in the top eight, and then we'll see where it goes from there, depending on who made it and kind of how the storylines work out. But we get to watch even more drafts. But for now, we've got more round 15 action here. Let's head down for some more time walk. That leaves us with Michael Van Vals playing against ooh Lucas Seal, hometown hero. <laughs> Hometown hero against the Dutchie. Like it. Crazy, too. I mean, Lucas <laughs> Lucas has had a rough day, right? He's had to beat some top-tier talent just to get to this point, including we saw him play against uh, Alexander Hain a little bit ago. With this same deck also. He has uh, Niv-Mizzet. He has Guild Mages for him, which we saw him use to excellent effect. And if you remember, this is an Izzet deck with a lot of creatures. It's a very aggressive plan here for Lucas. A lonely Wojek bodyguard and an Okran assassin on the other side for Michael now. I'm going to go ahead and say Michael's not Boros, but I don't think we can go back and fix that at this point. <laughs> Yeah, it seems unlikely that uh, Okran Assassin makes the Burroughs list. <laughs> we have also yet to see a red or white mana source outside of that game. <laughs> Maybe it's just not Boros. Yeah, not Boros. <laughs> I think that's, that's what, it, uh, what, what was meant there. And look at this. Ooh, sure strike on the defensive here for Lucas Siao. If this thing resolves, that could... Uh, provide a massive crackback for him. Well, it looks like we went from wrong to nothing <laughs> on the deck description. That happens. We also know that Lucas is just is it. We've uh, watched him play with this deck already. Ooh, under Umlich? Yeah, this is the first time we've seen this on camera. The only other one we saw was Surveilled Away, remember? It was super sad face, but it went away. Uh, because the player needed to find lands and couldn't do it. But Underrealm Lich is kind of cool. It'd be interesting to see what uh, what Lucas has here. Deal with this one. Huh. It's a pretty nice answer. Capture yeah, sphere. Th though to be fair, it does not stop its its static ability. Yeah, says, Michael's going to keep... Yeah, I'll, I'll read it just because we, we don't have the... Uh, card up. It says, if you would draw a card, instead look at the top three cards of your library, then put one in your hand and the rest into your graveyard. So you kind of churn through your library really quickly, but it should find you just straight up action for the rest of the game. Yeah, absolute unleaded gasoline forever here. High so. octane, buddy. Put it in your tank. Oh, find finality here to help stabilize by killing both creatures on Seau's side of the board is a huge play for Michael. He's now facing down zero threats. And he has just an unbelievable amount of card selection available to him also. We Dragonauts, though, for Lucas Seau, but like you said, Jake, every turn Michael is going to be just drawing the best of the top three cards of his library. Now, Unfortunately for him, the other cards do go in your graveyard, and that is a lot of cards. That's three cards per turn minimum. If he ever draws any other cards, it replaces that too. So, mm. yeah, he needs to end the game fast. Oh my goodness gracious! <laughs> Looks like there's another Underrealm Lich. What? Zombie Elf Shaman times two? So he's not looking at the top six. He just looks at the top three. You know, I did wonder um. that for a second. <laughs> <laughs> I figured there were a lot of people who thought that for a second. Yeah, but it's basically just the same effect replacing the one action. So mm -hmm. they can fight over e over who does it. But wow. <laughs> okay. It's an instead, not an additional. That's insane, by the way. That's a mythic rare. <laughs> that <laughs> is a mythic two rare. Two of those. Hey, Alexander Hain had two copies of Niv-Mizzet. You're right. Lucas Seau, <laughs> on hard mode, only one copy of Niv-Mizzet in his deck. <laughs> I don't know how he manages to scrape through life with only the one Niv-Mizzet, but he's done so so far today. And look at that, man. That Lich is just going nuts. Two islands hits the board, and a spell goes into hand. And now he gets to start attacking. Also, let's not forget the Underrealm Lich has the ability pay for life. 
Underrealm Lich gains indestructible until end of turn, and you also tap it. Demir Spybug doesn't look great here. It's just a 1-1, one -one, but boy, if he gets a counter or two on it, that is the type of card that can give him the clock he needs to kind of outrace his own <laughs> Underrealm Lich here. Yeah, that's a card that we haven't seen much of this weekend again, but it's a card I've been really impressed by in my drafts on Magic Online. Same. Good little card. The truth is, there's just so much Surveil around, just raw numbers. It's just on a lot of cards, and it's on a lot of cards that you want to play anyway. So that Spy Bug just routinely gets up to 2-2-3-3-4-4 two, two, three, three, four, four over the course of a game that you didn't even have to build specifically to it. Ooh. He's got a split card. Looks like it's a status statue. Okay, and he can cast it. Cast statue if he wants. Darkblade Agent hits the bin. He'd rather just have the removal spell. I think he probably correctly has recognized that either he loses the game because Lucas plays some big bomb, or he gets, we call it, cheesed out by the Wii Dragonauts. Like, Lucas casts four spells in a turn, and it's like, whoop, gotcha. Lucas could just also have enough means of defense to deck Michael. Right. You have to remember, Michael is Good churning point. through his deck very quickly because of this Underrealm Lich. Um, Makes it, me nervous, man. Yeah, so much so that I, I believe he's even, he's kind of afraid to cast this Notion Rain. Even with a Demir Spybug in hand. I wonder what he has in hand that he's using that mana for otherwise. So if he plays the Notion Rain, it would replace both card draws. So he would look at three and then look at three. Mm -hmm. So card, you know, hand or not, that would be six cards coming off the top of his library. Uh, <laughs> that adds up very quickly. This Underrealm Lich definitely puts some pressure on yourself here in Limited, but... I think it's worth it in order to control your draw step to that degree. I think most people would agree with me. Right, but the thing <laughs> is that... Well, but it's interesting because, you know, we're talking about him churning through his library, right? But it does replace your draw steps, right? Yes. So then Lucas would need to get rid of the Lich and then have him draw a card to do it. But he's got two. So... Eh. It's a lot of work, right? Yeah. Also, we can right. get indestructible. Oh, are you saying that you don't lose when you'd have to draw a card? Well, that's how I understand it. Because it's an instead, right? Huh. It says, if you would draw a card, instead, look at the top, da 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 And decking says, if you would draw a card, but you can't, you lose. Oh, this is an interesting... That, that's a question for I mean, a that, judge. I... Uh, that's how I understood it when yeah. I read it, but, but I, I still... Mean, th th it may work that way, but, right. But, you know, and the, the interesting point here, though, is that, like, that's a bounce spell away normally. Mm -hmm. But there is actually another Lich on the battlefield. It's just under the Capture Sphere. Yeah. So... The, Lucas does have Selective Slayer in his deck. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> he does! What <laughs> a weird game. This is a weird game. Now, alternatively, if Michael just simply kills Lucas before any of this is relevant, that is also an option. And when you're finding as much gasoline as Michael is, it's very possible. And in fact, with that removal spell, he has the lethal attack. So we're going to go into game number two. These players are playing for top eight. They're both sitting at 12 and 2. Lucas Siao now up against it. He, he's seen some of the raw power that Michael's brought to the table, and Lucas now needs to win back-to-back -back games to find himself in the top eight here at his home, home GP-ish. But this is a reasonable curve. I mean, Halberdier's a little embarrassing, but it does have three power, and there's nothing on the other side, so, you know, it's yeah. doing its thing. It does what it does. And this is what Lucas wants. Like, last game, Lucas didn't have a two-drop. Uh, we've seen Lucas play before. Mm. He has a lot of creatures in his deck. This is uh, he, that 2-3 combo for Lucas. Uh, he's very good at protecting that 2-3 and forcing through 20 points of damage. I feel sprite there for Lucas. Yeah, he did trade off the Halberdier, but boy, I guess if you trade it off for a Darkblade agent, you're kind of stoked on that. Yeah. Definite uh, trade up. 
even if they got the same amount of mana. Thought erasure now for Michael Van Vals means that uh, he gets to see what Lucas is up to, and Lucas is holding a very defensive hand here, Jake. He's got Disdainful Stroke, a pair of Capture Sphere, and he also has an Is It Locket. But I'll tell you what, if he can't maintain the threats on the battlefield, he could make this game go a little bit longer, or quite a bit longer, but he's going to need to find something to, uh, to kind of make it work. Michael's going to get aggressive here and take away his locket. He must think that this game's going to go for a while. Night Vale Sprite, of course, helping it out. Yeah, that leads me to believe that Michael definitely has uh, a pretty defensive hand as well. funny these uh these two games lucas's deck has looked quite a bit worse than the games we saw him play against alexander hayne yeah, where his deck out, looked well, incredible yeah he did have niv mizzet in two of those games which i'm told is good capture sphere on the night veil vale sprite showing good respect for the card filtering ability that that card provides it's been very good every time i've seen it, it particularly of course in surveil specific decks because it gives you a surveil trigger every turn that it can attack. But even then, you know, Lucas needed to find some threats, some lands, and, and that's the type of card that can help him do it. Gravitic Punch hitting the graveyard because of it, for example. That's a nice little little spin of value. I've been really impressed with the sprite in uh, just about every deck. Obviously, when you're getting Surveil Triggers, it's out of this world, but right. normally, just very good. Electromancer continuing to uh, peck away here. Only one blue mana, though, for Lucas. Yeah, and losing the uh, Is It Locket to Michael. Whoa! Is that a Dream Eater? Mythic City here from Michael Van Vals. Wow, he really did get hooked up, didn't he? Dang. Hey there. Dream Eater has the word Surveil 4 on it. Unfortunately for Michael, Lucas says, I'll just tap a blue and counter it, thanks. <laughs> yeah. He did, consider, Mythic Rare. he did consider not doing it, but that card's just too powerful to leave on the battlefield. And look at this, Night Vale Predator. Wow, Michael's deck is insane. Michael's deck is insane. Basically, Michael was just like, look... He's going to get to counter one of these two cards. And I, somehow he valued the Night Vale Predator higher. I mean, he knew about the Disdainful Stroke, right? He saw it with the Thought Erasure. He, I believe he has Find Finality left in hand here. So he can make oh this. Oh, my God. He's just going to find. Oh, he's just going to find. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he could have done that to kill the Electromancer. The, but look how good this is. This is way better. Yeah. Now he gets to uh, you know, have additional threats in hand. Yeah, that's just incredible. Surveilling. Yeah, and, and he, he just must have known, hey, I just got to work through the disdainful stroke. The Night Vale Predator staying home to block the Electromancer. Michael's life total has gotten a little low. He's down to 11. He's not super interested in trading three for two damage at this point in the game. Yeah, and, uh, you know, the longer this game goes, the more you have to figure Michael likes his chances. He has the, the Dream Eater in hand. He has the, yep. you know, he has two copies of Underrealm Lich in his library. Interesting. Is he just sitting on the Dream Eater here? Yeah. Kind of assumed we would see it there. Looks like Lucas wanted to get a quick read on exactly what it does. It has the word Surveil 4 on it. Okay, now we're going to see Dream here. Surveil 4 is, that is a lot of cards to dig through. 10% of your original 
starting library and certainly more than the percentage of that than the cards that are left and uh, he can really find some of his best stuff with this. Yeah, now something else that's really interesting here is that this trigger, uh, the bounce something trigger is delayed. It happens when you scry. So you get to look at the all those top cards before you have to decide which thing you want to bounce. Mm. So you can look at those top four cards be like, oh, well now I know that I'll be able to deal with X and Y, so I'm going to bounce Z. As opposed to having to decide which one you're going to bounce before you look at those top four mm. cards. Mm -hmm. So, it's one of those reflexive triggers. Yeah. Reduces the feel bad. <laughs> Boy. And Michael My has counter magic for days. Yeah, My Michael got hooked up in this draft, by the way. And you see that he's left up disdainful stroke here. That was part of the reason why he was being patient with the Dream Eater earlier, <clears throat> was because he wanted to get to enough mana to have two mana left over to counter a, the other capture sphere that he knew Lucas had, or even, you know, if Lucas had his mana up, uh, something like a devious cover-up, you know, to make sure that it resolved as well. R real patience here for Michael Van Vals. He knows that he wasn't under pressure in the immediate sense, and he decided just to wait. Now, the way that this could backfire on him is if Lucas Seau finds his copy of Niv-Mizzet Perun, because that is a very difficult card to deal with. It cannot be countered. He gets it on the battlefield and it can sort of wreak havoc. So, we'll see. Michael's gonna run the block here. Is he gonna get sure struck? It looks like he will get sure struck. <coughs> Somewhat Although he, risky he from may Seattle. just have a, a status statue in hand. Okay. Which, I, I think we saw multiple copies of that in the first game. Boy, he his deck is something else. Find finality. Yeah. Night Vale Predator, Dream Eater, two Underrealm Lich. Like, <laughs> is it his birthday? <laughs> How did that even happen? <laughs> so Seattle's going to go for something kind of interesting here. He's going to cast Sure Strike not on the Electromancer, the more obvious target, but instead the Fire Urchin. And that's going to – Michael says, hey, a two-for-one's a two-for-one. I'll take it. Especially if, if Lucas doesn't have a backup plan for the Electromancer, and he'd end up losing that as well. So he kind of has to have something here. Yeah, it, that play from Lucas looked really interesting because I think what he was trying to do was set himself up so that if he was able to draw his copy of Inescapable Blaze, that he could steal the game. Ah, he also has Gravitic Punch in the yard, so maybe there's some combination of cards there mm -hmm. that he could work it with. But unfortunately, that ended in, in disaster for Seau. He instead got two for one straight up and then threw away the Electromancer, so he lost three cards in that transaction. Burglar Rat's going to make him discard a land, leave him with just one card left in his hand. And Michael Van Vals, I wonder if Vals means value. Because <laughs> this guy gets it. Yeah, He's attacked in of. Or from. Michael of Value Town. And look at this. Dazzling Lights to... Uh, take that Gravitic Punch down a notch. Yes, yeah, suddenly that Gravitic Punch is just one to the dome. Yeah, and you know, I think that what you said is completely true here, by the way. Inescapable Blaze is definitely the card that both players have on their mind. Mm -hmm. Michael really making sure that his life total doesn't slip down any further than it needs to. He's going to fall to 10. Wouldn't have been at 6, but still. He wants to play very safely here. And look at this, two turn clock in the air. Hit you for seven, you're at five. Demir Informant, two lands hit the bin. And Michael is on the verge of a top eight here in Montreal. Things are looking very good for him. Boy, I wish he, I bet you he wishes he could take this deck into the top eight. Oh my too. goodness, I, I, I bet he wishes he could just like play this deck in every draft he plays for the rest of his life. No kidding, I'm, I would sign up for that. Sam. And it's wow, and he's got fun. Artful Takedown, too, for the <laughs> Wee Dragonauts. Is there anything left for Lucas Seau? Maybe he can tap down the Dream Eater with the... Uh... No. Red Zone. This is the table where Alex Hain had double Nim visit, too. Yeah, and that's going to do it <laughs> right there. Lucas Seau extends the hand, and it's Michael Van Vals knocking off the hometown hero and securing his spot in... The top eight with, boy, 
He should that go to the deck. local frame shop, yeah, and just have Ooh. that thing framed on the wall <laughs> for all time. It doesn't get much better than that. All the removal, the bombs, the sweeper, he just had it all. This round has been fun to watch. It really has, yeah. yeah. I wish Niv-Mizzet would have showed up because I'm not convinced that Seattle would win with it, but it would have made that game real interesting real quick. It would have demanded an answer. It would have been a lot different of a game. Yeah, for sure. But that's not how it worked out. So let's take a look at our standings after round 15. The names you see on the first eight spots, that's your top eight right there. <laughs> Christopher. <laughs> I like that. So Andrew <laughs> Reeser, Martin Eric Gauthier, Michael Van Vels, who we just saw win, uh, win his match. Leonard, who win. Christopher, who has a name which is too long to fit. <laughs> But we'll, we'll try to grab that for you. And then Alex Watt, who we've been watching a fair bit today. Andrew Abella makes it in off of his win. And there's Chris Ha. Ah, uh, here it is. Here's okay, so that's Christopher Wynn. Well, that's a different... All right, looks like <laughs> Isaac Krut is actually our last... Oh, the name oh, was two lines. Okay. okay, so that is your official top eight there. Chris Ha actually taking seventh, and Isaac Krut makes it in. Ari, so close. It was a clean cut there on 37 points, but he didn't quite make it in there. So, some, some other big names, though, at the top of the list, though. Yeah, uh, pretty amazing day there. Yeah. Uh, these last, this last round in particular, I feel like I watched so much limited awesomeness. Yeah. I got to watch Thousand Year Storm go <laughs> yeah, off. You did, you did. I got to watch a player have multiple copies of Underrealm Lich and Dream Eater facing yeah. off against yeah. an awesome deck with Niv Mizzet. I mean, just. We saw a Golgari deck win. We did. That hasn't happened much this weekend. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, though, it's time to draft. We're going to be in the top eight. We're going to be cracking packs, getting the decks ready, and we're going to be crowning a champion. A little bit later on tonight. For now, take a short break. When we come back, draft it. We'll see you then.